Welcome everyone to today's Success Patterns TV show. I'm so honored and excited to be here yet again with you today. Today with an absolute action rock star. Well, I'm going to add a little word in here. He's actually a retired, not rock star. He's just retired. Let's just put retired out there because I can't say that he's retired rock star. I can't say that he's retired action either. All of that is still very much alive, but he is a uh, retired uh, real estate rock star. Let's put it that way. I have with me today, Joe Cavanaugh. Joe, thanks for being here. Oh, thank you for having me, Brigitte. It's a real honor. So, Joe, um, I already shared a little bit of, of what you do, but, you know, let's not limit you to real estate. Who is Joe? Tell, tell our listeners who you are, what is it that you do, and what makes you such an incredible person? Oh, wow. Um, how many hours do we have? Oh, yeah, we got all day. <laughs> I'll give you the synopsis here. Um, basically, I've been an entrepreneur most of my adult life. <clears throat> um, the age of 29, I got tired of working for the man punching a clock, went off and ventured on my own. I won't go into all the details, but I uh, loved it so much. I said, I'll never punch a clock again. And I haven't. And um, kept looking at different things, trying to find my way, finally get into real estate. And that was my niche. That was what worked for me. Um, so I'm an entrepreneur that way. I currently own three businesses and run three businesses. Um, obviously, like you said, I'm a licensed realtor. I have a broker's license, uh, working for what I feel is the most successful, uh, real estate team in, uh, our real estate company in Charleston. And we just found out this week, we're ranked number 51 in the nation for real estate teams. Yeah. And wow. the owner's goal is to get to the top 10. So we're on the rocket path. That's for sure. Um, I'm also a certified real estate appraiser, have been for about 30 years now, have my own appraisal company, and um, also a real estate investor. And I also work with uh, my wife, Cindy, on the bank methodology with Codebreaker Tech, where we do some personality work, and we do business coaching, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, yeah, so retired is probably not the way people are thinking of retired, <laughs> When when I think of retired, I think of, you know, in, in cargo shorts in your front yard, pulling out weeds. Well, I can show you the cargo shorts well, <laughs> <laughs> and the flip flops. But um, no, um, you know, life is funny that way. Uh, all my life, I pushed, pushed, pushed. I, I was a rebel. People, if told, you tell me I can't do something, damn it, I'm going to do it just to prove you're wrong. And that's what really got me going in my real estate career. I moved from Maine to Charleston, South Carolina. And I was told when I got here that I could not be successful. Uh -huh. I said, really? Watch me. Mm -hmm. and I quickly became, uh, depending on who you talk to, the second or third largest real, uh, real estate appraisal firm in Charleston. To this day. Uh, not now, because it all changed back in 2008 when the mm -hmm. uh, when the housing crisis hit. Yeah. And it was changed and we had to downsize, et cetera. So, um, no, not what I used to be. Uh, so let me ask you this. So you're not you don't take no for an answer, right? You you um, you you're, you go by the credo of or by the creed of. Um, you know, if, if you're the one to tell me uh, I, it can be done, just get out of the freaking way. Right. Make yeah, room. What, what, is it, what is it they say down south? Hold here, hold my beer. Watch this. Oh. <laughs> get out of the way. If you're not coming with me, just get out of the way. Yeah, pretty much. Yep. Yep. And uh, what is it? Lead, follow, or get out of the way. But uh, I just want <laughs> people to follow me or, or be with me. Lead with me is actually more accurate, I'd say. So as a leader, and you clearly are a leader, and you're a very tenacious leader, Joe, I see that there's a, a bunch of um, certifications back there with medals. Tell me about that. Yeah, um, as you were, you're aware, because you were involved in this, um, a couple of years ago, we went to see Tony Robbins at a, a National Achievers Conference, and they have several speakers. In Atlanta. In Atlanta, yes, your hometown. 
And uh, the last speaker on the last day was the only female, my wife pointed out, happened to be Sherry Tree, who founded the bank methodology. That's a lot of that pertains to behind me. And as soon as we heard her speak, we both said this is something we could use. So we dove into the deep end and ended up uh, studying it first of all, and then going uh, signing up to be trainers and going to the training to which you were an integral part of that teaching us and uh, loved your energy. So that really enticed us as well. Um, and it has made me very successful. Um, I came back and started implementing it into my real estate business. And I more than doubled my conversion rate in less than six months and my income, obviously. Yeah. Wow. And I would assume that through your success, that the people that you work with in with um, Matt O'Neill, that they benefit from that as well. They learn from you. Leaders are learners and leaders are teachers. Absolutely. I've had many agents come to me with problem uh, clients or prospects. And first thing I say to them, so what's their code? What's their personality? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Tell me about them. And they'd start, they'd spend a couple of minutes telling me about them and what they said to them. And I said, okay, I know who they are. Let me talk to them. And I would save, you know, sometimes a deal. Usually it was a listing or getting them to sign up as a buyer. Um, and, you know, the saying, uh, what is it? A rising tide raises all ships or whatever. Yeah. Um, so yes, uh, just having that knowledge and gaining that expertise which is that that's a testament to behind me. Um, it has brought up my game and others around me. And a lot of the young agents now come to me for advice for that. I believe that very reason. Yeah, well, smart. Those are smart young agents, very smart young agents. So you and Cindy are actually going to Matt O'Neill and training, uh, have an ongoing training with the bank methodology for the... Yeah. Yes, I love that. I'm glad you brought that up because when we first went to this two years ago, we came back home and Matt O'Neill owns our company. Very smart young businessman. He's brilliant. And uh, he says, hey, come into our training next week and show us what you learned in Atlanta. And I'm like, we don't even, we can't even repeat what we learned. So we had a slideshow and Cindy, her uh, tenacity or whatever you want to call it, she printed everything out that Sherry said on index cards. And we have this stack of index cards that so we get up in front of the room and we prepped them. We said, look, we haven't memorized this yet. So we have to read it. And they're like, okay. I mean, at the end, they were all over it. They said, this is exciting, right? However, Matt, who is an avid disc man, which disc mm -hmm. is great, as we know, for its own purposes. Mm -hmm. um, he just thought, you know, no, I'm not going to convert to this right away. You'll need to go out and prove it. And then we'll say the proof is in the pudding. So, yeah. I did. so I did. Just like I said, if you tell me to do something, challenge me, I'm going to do, do it. it. Tenacity. It, it's taken two years. And he finally said to me, he says, uh, I want to uh, bring you and Cindy in here and uh, train bank to some of our, to, uh, to our agents. That's and amazing. The funny thing about that meeting was, and we brought Jeannie in, who we all know is a, an expert too. So she was- She'll be on that show. She'll be on our show week after next. Okay, great. Jeannie Zehoffer, awesome, wonderful person. Um, so Cindy and I were live in the office with Matt and Jeannie was on the computer, zoomed in. And um, we made a proposal to him. And he says, no, that's not going to work at all. That because of his model and all that. So, you know, at first I'm like, oh, really and then he says but this is what i will propose you do i want to hire you for one year contract to come in and train twice a month at our training sessions for the whole company and that ended up being a financially a better deal for us <laughs> and he is promoting us through work uh, he's constantly talking us up he's really promoting it well so he's finally seen the value in it Mm -hmm. And um, to me, to have him as a co convert is one of the biggest, um, what would you say, co goals that we've accomplished to date. So for sure, yeah, lead by example. Yes, and 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 not letting go of what your purpose is and and what your goal is. What is? How do you define success, Joe? Uh, yeah, I had to think about that one. I know you asked me ahead of time, and I said, hmm. There's so many answers to that. Um, yes. 
Now in real estate specifically, okay, I would say it's when I've achieved, achieved my client's goals. Uh, I've satisfied my clients as far as what, they are cons- what their goals are concerned, how they're concerned, mm-hmm. and they are happy. And usually I get that in the feedback. When they tell me, boy, you really listened to us and, and got us what we want or got us more than we expected. Um, you've been better than we expected, et cetera. Um, that to me is, is success there. But overall in life, um, I kind of look back on it a lot of reflection at this point in my life. And um, it's taking comfort in the fact that I did the best I could throughout my life with what I knew at the time. Mm-hmm. And that was a tough one to admit because we all make mistakes, parenting, you know, career choices, whatever, social choices, things like that. And uh, I always used to beat myself up about it. Not always, frequently used to beat myself mm-hmm. up about it. I, I'm learning some NLP. And um, that... Now I continue to prove on myself as a person. And um, my daily goal now is one of the goals I have is to learn something new every day. They are successful when I've learned something that day. Um, I've made the choice to have no regrets over anything that's gone on in the past. I read a lot, I meditate a lot. Everything gears towards, you know, don't worry about what's happened. There's nothing you can do about it. Be present. I love that. You see, so you met, you said several incredible things and I want to point them out. First of all, it's not success. What you first said was not about you. It was about your client. You made it about your client, not about yourself. Right. Another thing that you said about success is, you know, learning, meditating, um, doing the best that you can with the resources in the moment that you are at any given moment that you're not beating yourself up. That is such a, profound um, and admirable concept that I think, I don't know, does that come with age? Does that come with growth? What is, how does, how do you get that? Boy, that's, that's a loaded question, but I, I have to believe that a good part of that does come with age because when we're younger, we're trying to be somebody that everybody else wants us to be. And at least in my case, and when I talk to people, they're the same way. Um, they gave me the same feedback. And, um, you know, I've always been tried to be a people pleaser. And I've never really sat back and said, just be who you are, and people will love you. And uh, that, it, it, along with the fact that I met my beautiful wife uh, six years ago now. And, and she's beautiful indeed. Oh, my God. Wait till I hope you have her on the show sometime soon because I will love her. And she has been the catalyst that has um, allowed me and encouraged me and led me to be able to um, change my thinking, change my life and uh, open up and be who I, who I really am. Yeah, that's beautiful. Oh, what's the, what would you say is one consistent in your, when you look at what's, how you define success, what is something that you consistently do that leads you to a success? What is something that's reoccurring that you do over and over again? Um, well, first of all, I always had the attitude that I want to treat others the way I want to be treated. Oh, and, mm-hmm. and I actually tell them that when I meet, you know, especially like a listing appointment. People evidently, from the feedback I get, they have this mindset that this agent is just going to tell me what I want to hear so they can get the listing. Mm -hmm. And I purposely asked them right up front, do I have your permission to be honest and tell you the truth the whole time, whether it's good news or bad news? And they're like, oh, please, that would be refreshing, you know? Uh, So I found that to help really well. And um, yeah, I tell them that's, I'm going to treat you the way I want to be treated, plain and simple. Um, I definitely go out with a positive attitude Mm -hmm. and exude positive energy because you get back what you put out in the universe. That's right. And again, I've learned that. And as I uh, put it into practice, it becomes clearly evident how well that works. It's, it's amazing. It, it blows me away all the time. Um, another thing I do is I surround myself with like kind people. And mm-hmm. that's important. Mm-hmm. Those who have a positive attitude, they're kind uh, and successful. Proximity. Yeah. And I don't know who 
first said this, but I hear it a lot through your training and others that um, you are the five people you hang around with. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's that's a Napoleon Hill kind of a um, yeah. strategy, right? Yeah. That he wrote in in his book, Think and Grow Rich. Think and Grow Rich, right. Mm -hmm. yep. I yep. had a, oh. yeah. And, and, and one last thing I want to add um, is um, it's also very important that to be a lifelong learner. Yes. Um, even at my age, and I don't mind telling people I'm 67. I'm a very healthy 67. I got plenty of years left. I'm not actually retired, <laughs> far from it. It's, <laughs> it's that mindset. If I say, um, and I'm looking at it, what Cindy put on my computer right here, I am retired. I am choosing to do real estate. Yes. And what that has done is it has eliminated all the stress that I was putting on myself. Mm -hmm. And most of us, I think, end up doing that. It's not other people that are stressing us. It's ourselves. It's coming from oh, ourselves. So true. So much truth. And, and there's a very tiny little word in, in, the, in your little card that you have on your computer. And that is choice. Choosing. Yep, I am choosing. That's what I get up and choose to do that day. Um, uh, what was I going to say to you? Um, yeah, and, and having still having mentors and um, coaches and people like that, you have to be constantly learning. I mean, that's how you become successful. That's how you become an expert. That's Plain right. You don't become you. You can be good, but to be successful and be that expert, you need constant coaching and training. And I do. I learn something all the time. Leaders are learners. And, and in, success doesn't come from one book that you read. Success c comes from what I'm hearing from you now saying comes from the constant work that you're doing no matter how old you are. There is no age limit to success. Nope. Age is how, a number. Age is a number. How old was um, uh, KFC, uh, what's his name? Oh, the Colonel you're talking about? Yeah. Um, I don't Pardon? even know. He, I think he was in his early 70s. I want to say he was 73 when he founded KFC. So you, you, if, you, if that is your way of looking at success, then there is truly no age limit to success. God knows how old Warren Buffett is, and he's not stopping anytime soon, right? right? He's, I think he's in his late 80s, probably. Yes, I believe, yep. So in... I think, I think one way that people are not getting to their success is not starting or is quitting somewhere down the road because it's tedious, it's challenging, it's hard, it's, you know, whatever it may be. Yes. And, you know, something I want to add to that that just came to mind, um, and we have this actually hanging up. I hung this up in our bathroom, and it talks about um, you wouldn't hang around with people if they had negative thoughts all the time. Yet we put up with so much negativity in our own head. Would you hang around with yourself if you really listened to it? And um, that's the thing, you just, um, myself, can't speak for anybody else, but myself, I've been very critical of me all the time. I'm never good enough, never successful enough. Um, I'm pretty so sure that the I'm pretty sure that some of our listeners go, yeah, that's me. Yeah. And uh, to a point, it's good it, to be driven. I mean, I grew up with no advantages and a large Irish Catholic family. We, had, we were immigrants. Um, you know, I, nev I never felt the leather jacket till I was 17. I found one in a store and I wasn't even sure what it was. But I'm not, you know, looking for sympathy or anything. I'm just saying I was determined to make something of myself. I did not want to be just living paycheck to paycheck and renting and never owning anything and just going through life with, to me, it felt like no meaning. Of course, that's not true, but uh, you know. If it's meant to be, it's up to me. And that's what I've, I'm, I'm hearing from you. I want to close out uh, today with Joe. How do people learn from you and follow you and get in touch with you? Share with us and our listeners how they get in touch with you. Okay, well, obviously, I'm on social media, Facebook and uh, Instagram. And um, of course, you can, you can call my cell phone anytime. I'm not afraid to put that out there, 
8506. Um, my email probably should give you my private email, not my real estate work one. That's Joe M. Cav. So it's J O E M K A V 54 at Gmail. And uh, those are probably the easiest ways to get a hold of me. And of course, that phone number is a mobile number, so you can text or call me. I love to talk to people, so please call me. Yes, Joe never met a stranger, honestly, which I haven't either, and that's why we get along so well. It so you haven't met yet, that's all. <laughs> that's right. So Joe Kavanaugh, K-A-V-A-N-A-G-H, Joe Kavanaugh on all social media. I'm pretty sure there's only one Joe Kavanaugh that's spelled with a Kavanaugh like that. I would oh, assume. Well, there's quite a number of them out there. That's a very popular Irish name, by the way. I always saw it spelled with an A-U-G-H. I never saw it with an A-G-H. Yeah, that's, um, as I call it, the Americanized version. Aha! Because in I... Ireland, it's pronounced Kavanaugh. Kavanaugh. But here <laughs> they say Kavanaugh. And when they <laughs> say aw, they think A-U-G-H. Right. I see. I see. Yeah, especially in the South. We, we draw it out even longer. Isn't that the truth? Now, I do know that a lot of Kavanaugh's do actually officially have that U in their name. I do not. So, you do not. So it's okay. Joe Kavanaugh without any U's in the name. It's all A's. So make sure that you connect with Joe. Joe, thank you for taking the time. I can't wait to have Cindy on my show. Um, his, his other half, I'm going to even say better half, is absolutely phenomenal in her own right. She's very successful. She's stunning. And she's really funny, too. She's gorgeous, funny. She's wise. How in the world, Joe? I don't and know. And, and yeah, just, yeah. You're a fabulous closer. That's what you are. <laughs> uh, uh, she would probably tell you this. That I'll, she dubbed me the greatest salesman in the world because I got her to marry me. <laughs> and I'll let her tell that story. We'll, t we'll ask her about that. Joe, thank you for being on. Thanks, everyone, for listening and, and watching. Bye, everyone. Thank you, Brigitte. Bye-bye. Thank Bye -bye. you. Ciao. Go watch the, the show, uh, the football game. Yes. Ciao. <laughs> ciao.